We have Heather King joining us now. And uh, Heather is originally from New Hampshire, but now lives in Los Angeles area where it's nice and warm. And we're glad she's here to talk about her book, Stumble, Virtue, Vice, and the Space Between. Heather, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, tell us, let's get right to it. Tell us about the new book. Well, my new book is a collection of essays. Um, I like to say they're about salvation, crisis, and the tragic comedy of the Daily Cross. So um, they're a lot about my, just my daily life in, in Los Angeles, and I'm all about that's where the Gospels come alive, just as we uh, go about our daily lives, all the challenges, all the joys. And some of these uh, essays, they talk about the, the struggles of being holy, and uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people like to highlight all their accomplishments, but why did you decide to uh, talk about the, the stumbles and the struggles? Well, I think a list of your accomplishments is a resume. It's a CV. It's not a story. A story always has a stumble, if not a, a major collapse, in it, <laughs> minus several. And, um, and I think people, I think the Gospels are an invitation to identify, not compare. It's not a competition. It's not about, I, I'm please, I am so not holy, yeah. but, um, but I have the desire to be holy. Yeah. And so I think people identify with the challenges and the, um, and the struggles, and they want to see that you got up and kept walking after the, after the stumble. And we see the people stumble in the Gospels, uh, and we all try to be holy, but, you know, it, it is a challenge, and we, we are going to stumble all the time. But for some people, when they stumble, they have trouble forgiving themselves and moving on. How, how do we get past that stage where when we do make a mistake and we do stumble, which is going to happen, that we pick ourselves up and move forward? Well, and I think this is so much of the, of the human journey. And um, I know some of my own um, stumbles have been really severe. Um, I have alcoholism, so I was uh, in the kind of a dark night of the soul for many years. And I think so much of it is forgiving ourselves. And Christ says, He's all about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. He says, come to the banquet table. So, but I think it's a process. It's not something that happens instantly. So we have to open our own heart and yes. allow God to come into our heart and say, hey, if he can forgive me, then maybe I can forgive myself. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're not going to be perfect. Nobody does it perfectly. Mm -hmm. I know you're... Um you, you've written this book, but I know you're a blogger. I know you do <laughs> speaking as well. You, you do a lot of things. So talk about all the things that you do and how you keep it all together. I do. I have a lot of, I have several books now. Um, I have another book coming out later in the year, and I have two books coming out wow. next year. And, um, and I do have a blog, heather-king.com. And I do, I do retreats and I do talks increasingly. That's become more a part of my life. And uh, you know, I'm not married and I don't have kids, and that's one way that I can do all of that. But it also requires um, a lot of, I require a lot of silence and solitude, so I'm very careful to build prayer into my day. I go on, on retreats, private retreats, a lot. And so there's a whole zone. I don't watch TV. Um, my social life is somewhat <laughs> limited, as <laughs> any of my friends will attest. Um, but it is, it is a lot. And, um, and I just don't know how anyone does it without masses of prayer. Yeah. It's all prayer. Yeah. Because yeah, that is a lot. I mean, Kevin was saying that, and I said, oh, my goodness, she does that, she does that, she does that. And you were talking, you have a retreat coming up actually around here, too. Yes. So. Yes, I'm doing a Lenten retreat at um, a series of talks at St. Mar Margaret Mary and St. Dennis. So I've been doing that the last and couple nights. I'll be there again tonight. Westwood, Massachusetts. Yes. So if someone's watching this who lives in Massachusetts, I know this is everywhere, but in Massachusetts, they could go and watch it. Yes, and they could you. come and learn about almsgiving. <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Well, next year will mark 10 years since you converted to the Catholic faith. Tell me about that, because I always find it so interesting. It seems that a lot of people who convert to the faith are the ones who are so filled with the faith and write books and blog and, <laughs> and talk. And, but tell me about that. Um, it well, actually will have been 20 years next year. I came it's into the church 20 yeah, years. in 1996. And so I always say, as a convert, I'm like the worker who came late to the vineyard. I came at 5 o'clock, and everybody, all you cradle Catholics, have been sweating in the hot sun, <laughs> saying the rosary on your knees at the age of three. So I think that's why converts get to have so much fervor. They're not exhausted by having been doing the drill for so long. No, but seriously, um, I wrote a book about my conversion. It's called Redeemed, uh, and um, 
and I was working as a Beverly Hills lawyer, and I really had this deep call of my heart to be a writer, and so I write about this whole giving up the job and, and embarking on this very um, precarious existence of a creative writer, and I've never regretted it for an instant. You were a lawyer, too. Never looked back. I was a lawyer, yeah. What haven't you done? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I quit my job as a lawyer and started to write right around the same time. So my, my, um, and came into the church right around the same time. So my writing, my vocation as a writer is so, for me, tied in with my conversion. And so it's such a beautiful honor and a joy for me to be able to, um, to come and just talk about my book and my work. <laughs> Well, if you could, too, I know you mentioned it once, but how would people find out more about the book, about you, about your blog? How um, my blog, okay, heather-king.com, and on it, it's a combination blog website, so it has everything. It okay. has, um, there's a story on there right now about my little stay at the Holiday Inn in Dedham, for <laughs> instance, and my prayer, by the way, is that I won't be snowed in at Logan tomorrow <laughs> when I'm supposed to go home, but, um, so my blog has stories, has pictures of my walks around Los Angeles. It has my books. It has my upcoming events. It has my um, columns. I do a weekly arts and culture column for the Tidings. The Archdiocesan okay. newspaper of LA has contact information. Everybody in the world is welcome to email me, and everybody I sometimes feel does. So I'm very accessible, and um, so there's lots there. Hey, well, Heather, thanks so much yeah. for being with us today. Even though you came from a sunny state, we still <laughs> still love you. So <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you being here. We heart Massachusetts. <laughs> yes. Well, I have to tell you, I mean, Kevin wants to keep talking about snow. Yeah. And, and I don't want to talk about snow anymore. I want to talk about the sunshine. Yeah. That's why I'm so glad you're here. Because now we have a little L.A. sunshine with us. Even though you're New Hampshire girl, but, but we yeah. still have the L.A. And Boston. I lived in Boston for 10 years. Graduate oh, of Suffolk Law. Yes, oh, I'm a Boston girl, too. So. All right. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Thank, Thank you. you.